Hey guys, welcome to Mama's Basement. We are playing a little MVP 06 NCAA baseball. This is Oregon State Beavers Dynasty. We are trying to get ourselves to the postseason. We have an overall record of 18 and 24. We are 9 and 6 in conference. And uh, we're trying to win the Pac 10 and get ourselves into a regional tournament, uh, especially now since the uh, real life NCAA baseball tournament is ongoing, the College World Series nearing its start. We're going to go ahead and uh, quick manage a couple of games here. We have one on the road in uh, Champaign, Illinois against the Fighting Illini. We're out to a 11-2 lead here in the sixth inning. And this one looks like it's going to go our way as Harville started in this one for us. Renee Rogers went two for four. He had four RBIs. Uh, Nick Swayden, one for five. Washburn went one for five, had three RBIs himself. Uh, Norris, the catcher, uh, backup catcher in for this one, went one for three. And uh, Ari Riesland, three for five, and Fellows, three for five. Norris, Fellows, and Rogers all had doubles. Rogers hit his eighth home run, and Washburn hit his fifth home run. RBIs, two from uh, Fellows, four from Rogers, and three from Washburn. And a stolen base for Fellows. On the mound in this one for us, Harville went six and a third, gave up seven hits, two runs, two of them earned two walks, three strikeouts, and he gave up one home run. And then Hamilton came in and pitched two and two thirds of scoreless innings for us. We uh, get the win 11 to two in this one. And we head to the final game here in Champaign against the Fighting Illini. They are ranked number 18 in the country at 30 and 17. So that was a very good win for us, 11 to two in that one. Fossum goes for us in this one, and guys, Fossum got hurt back there in like the second inning of this game, so Fossum had to leave, and he will end up missing a start, and that could put us in a difficult situation because we do not really have a fourth starting pitcher as we drop this one to Illinois, eight to seven. Rogers went one for three, Maloney one for five with an RBI, Swayden one for three, he had three runs driven in, Washburn two for five. Shinjo went 0 for in five at bats. Tomko one for four with an RBI. Bigby, our first baseman, went one for four with a couple of runs scored. Ari Riesland, another good game. He was three for four, and Fellows one for three. Riesland and Fellows had doubles, RBIs to Maloney. Fellows had two again. Nick Swayden had three, and Tomko had one. On the hill for us. Fossum only went one and a third innings before getting hurt. He gave up one run on a hit. And uh, Rodriguez came in, pitched two-thirds of an inning, gave up a couple of runs, and then Hamilton got uh, beat up there in his four innings, eight hits, four runs. And Hernandez got the loss as he pitched the final two and a third, giving up the game-winning run for Illinois. So we head into the next series, which is against Marshall, and I did not manage to record the uh, quick manage of the first game against the Thundering Herd, but we pounded them 18-8. to They have a very poor record, as you see there, 10-39. and We are 20-25. and This is the second game of three against the Marshall Thundering Herd, and we're going to quick manage that one, and then we will play the next, the final game of the series against Marshall. And we're out to a 5-1 lead in this one. In the 8th, ninth. it looks like we're going to come away with the win, possibly. Yes, we do. So we beat Marshall 5-1, and we will go for the series sweep in the next one. Rodgers went 3-4. for four. Maloney, 2-4. Two Swayden, 2-5. for five. Washburn, 1-5. for five. Four RBIs for Jeff Maloney, the third baseman for us. Uh, Jeff Banwert, back from injury. He went 1-4 for four in an RBI in his return. Shinjo went 0-4. Tomko was 0 for 4, Bigby 1 for 4, Fellows 1 for 4 with a run scored. Uh, Maloney, Banwert, Swayden, Rogers, Washburn all had doubles. Rogers actually had three doubles in this game. Swayden had two. Jeff Maloney hit one home run. That's his third of the season. Maloney had four RBIs, and Banwert had an RBI as well as we beat the Marshall Thundering Herd 5 to 1. On the mound for us in this one, was uh looks like it was Harville once again. He went seven innings, five hits, one run, one of them earned, three walks and five strikeouts. Rodriguez went one inning, gave up a hit, no runs, and Castaneda 
close this one out with one inning, two hits, no runs, but he struck out all three of the outs in the inning. So now we head to uh, the third and final game as you see the uh, final line score there. The third and final game against Marshall, it's a non-conference game, so we remain at 9-6 and six in the Pac-10. We are trailing Stanford, and we actually will play Stanford in the next series after this Marshall series, and we'll have that on the next uh, episode of Oregon State Beavers Dynasty. But we are going to head out to uh, Huntington, West Virginia to face the Marshall Thundering Herd. They are 10-40, and 40, and we come into this one 21-25. and 25. There's a little bit of rain falling from blue sky. As we take on the Marshall Thundering Herd, Chan Clapp. We got the clapper on the hill here, his 15th appearance. He is 0-10, my friends, 0-10 with a 7.24 ERA. So we are going to try hard to not be his first victory of the season. Rene Rogers will step in to lead things off, off against Clapp. And he is walked in the first plate appearance of this game. And Rogers is going to go ahead and still second, so he is on second now. The next guy with the check swing, I think that was Banwert, not 100% sure. And here is Nick Sweden, and Sweden drives it deep to right field, and that one goes into the cornrows. A three-run home run before Marshall can even get an out in this game. And it is Nick Sweden with the home run and drives in three for Oregon State. And that brings up Gino Washburn. He's starting to help carry this team along with Rene Rogers, and he lines out to the first baseman. Here is Jeff Banwert, the shortstop. Banwert, this is just his second game back from injury, and he flies out to right field, bringing up the designated hitter, Trey Markle. Markle has not played a ton this year. He grounds it up the middle for a base hit, and Markle is on first, and the inning continues here in the top of the first. Here's Devon Tomko. He is the right fielder with Markle on first. Here's the delivery. Grounded to the right side through the hole. And we got runners on first and second in a long, miserable first inning for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And their pitcher, Clapp. But the big curveball strikes us out. And Felix Hamilton will make the start for us. This is a very dangerous start as this is the place of Fossum who was injured in that game against Illinois that we quick managed. This is the spot he would be starting. We really don't have a fourth starter, so it is going to be pitcher by committee in this game as nobody really has the stamina to hold up for a, a decent quality start. Runner on first, here's Banward at short. He's gonna go to second to Riesland. Riesland on to first for the double play. And at the end of one, it's three to nothing. Oregon State with the lead. The sky is getting a little bit gray and cloudy. The rain is coming down just a little bit. And the big breaking ball finds the strike zone for strike three. And that's the first out of the second inning. Here's Renee Rogers. He's going to rip this one into left field where it is caught by the left fielder charging in. Jeff Maloney comes to the plate now. Jeff Maloney's batting 276 on the year. And Maloney swings at a high changeup, and he's going to lift this one high into center field. But right at the center fielder for out number three, in the middle of two, it's three to nothing Beavers. Brett Moon comes to the plate for the herd now. He grounds it to the right side to Bigby. Bigby's going to step on the bag for out number one, bringing up Troy Reinhardt. He's the first baseman for the Thundering Herd. And the fastball is blown past him for out number two, Ralph Palin now. Ralph Palin grounds it back up the middle, but Hamilton with a quick stab is able to snag it. And at the end of two, we still lead three to nothing. Nick Sweden, his second plate appearance now after the home run back in the first, and he goes to right field again. This one is high and fairly deep, but it is going to stay in the park and be playable. And it's caught for out number one. Here's Gino Washburn. Washburn lifts a little one to left field or to third base where it is booted there by the third baseman, and Washburn is on first. Here's the breaking ball into right field, and the catch is made. Washburn's going to have to stay at first, and here comes Trey Markle. Markle's one for one today. 
He grounds it to the right side to second. On to first. And that retires the side. Here in the middle of three, it's still three to nothing. Here's Eric Tapscott. The lefty is going to lift it to the left side. And Sweden's going to get under it out there in left and make the catch for out number one. Todd Huizar, the shortstop for the herd, comes to the plate now. And he grounds it to the left side to third. Maloney on to first at one hops Bigby, and he scoops it for out number two. Here's uh, Sean Cornejo. Cornejo on the ground to Bigby, and Bigby will step on the bag for out number three. We're through three here in Huntington, West Virginia. It's still three to nothing, Oregon State. Here's Devin Tomko batting 221. On the breaking ball, he lifts this one harmlessly into right field. And the right fielder is under it for Marshall. He makes the catch, bringing up Brandon Bigby. He's batting 220 now. And he swings over the top of a changeup for out number two, bringing up Ari Riesland. We're here in the top of the fourth. Riesland with a soft line drive to left field, and the shortstop's able to get back on it. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's a fly ball to the left side. Sweden charging. Sweden is not going to get there. It's going to drop for a base hit for the herd. And that was Chambliss, who's on first. Brady Huddy now. And Brady Huddy grounds it up the middle. A high chopper. It gets through the infield. And we got runners on first and second for Brandon DiPastino. And DiPastino drives this one into center field. A base hit. One run's going to come around to score. Rogers gets it back to the infield. And we got runners on second and third. And Brett Moon, the DH, is coming to the plate. He's batting 296. Moon grounds it to the right side. Bigby steps on the bag for the out. And here is Troy Reinhardt now with one down and runners on second and third. Reinhardt on the ground to Banwert. Banwert's going to go to first. And the run will come in to score. It's 3-2 to two now. With two outs, a runner on second. Here's Palin. Palin grounds it to the right. Bigby has it. He's going to get back to the bag in time. At the end of four, Marshall has cut the lead to three to two, and Renee Rogers will start off the fifth for the Beavers. And he is drilled in the leg, and Rogers is going to limp to first and bring up Jeff Maloney. Maloney walked earlier in the game. Rogers is on first. Maloney strikes out swinging, and that'll bring up Nick Swayden. Rogers is running on the pitch. Sweden swings and misses. Here's the throw, and it is not in time. Another stolen base for Renee Rogers. And a check swing strike three on Nick Sweden. And here is Gino Washburn, and Washburn's going to swing over the changeup to end the inning for Oregon State. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Huizar, the shortstop. And Huizar is going to sacrifice the guy on first on to second base. And we do manage to get Huizar out at first by a hair. And here is Cornejo. Cornejo's going to bunt as well. Cornejo heading to first. Bigby gets it over to Riesland. But that's going to get a runner to third with a couple of outs. And Michael Rodriguez is going to come in from the pen as we uh, start the uh, rotation of pitchers here in this one. And Chambliss grounds it up the middle, and this game is tied. Marshall is hanging around, and they are tied up with us now in the bottom of the fifth. And we end the fifth inning all tied up at three. We go to the top of the sixth, Brandon Bigby. He's batting 218 on the year. Bigby takes the high fastball for a walk. That's ball four. Ari Riesland comes to the plate now with Bigby on first. Riesland's going to try to bunt him over, but his bunt goes right back to the pitcher, and they get... The out at second base, Renee Rogers now with one out and a runner on first. Rogers, a check swing, and that'll move the runner to second, but Rogers is out at first. As you take a look at this, he check swings and unfortunately makes contact with the baseball. So that works as a sacrifice. There's two outs and a runner on second. And the drive into center field by Banwert is going to score, or not by Banwert, excuse me, uh, by Jeff Maloney, and that's going to score a run for Oregon State. It's 4-3 to three now for the Beavers, and here's the drive to deep right center, and that is run down by the center fielder. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning now. It's 4-3 to three Oregon State. Here's Ralph Palin. The third baseman steps in, and Palin grounds it to the left side. Maloney on to first for the first out of the inning. 
Eric Tapscott now. He's one for two today. He's batting 353 on the year, one of the better hitters for this Thundering Herd team. Swayden's on his horse, and he's not going to get to it. In fact, he misplays it. That one gets past Swayden to the wall. Tapscott's around second. He's heading to third. Swayden gets the ball back in, and the runner's going to end up at third base with one out. Now here's the drive deep to right field. Tomko back, and that one's into the cornfield. A two-run home run for Marshall. And the Thundering Herd have taken the lead here. It is Will McGriff. Not the crime dog, but he gets a home run and two RBIs to put the Marshall Thundering Herd in front. Five to four. Here's Banwert now. Over to first to get the out. There's two outs in the seventh inning. Here's a drive to right field. It's in foul territory, but Tomko's going to run it down and make the catch. At the end of seven, Marshall leads this one five to four. Change up. Line to the left side, caught by the shortstop, Huizar. Here is Jeff Banwert now. He's the Oregon State shortstop. Banwert slaps it to the right side to the first baseman who steps on the bag. Two outs now in the eighth. Here's Trey Markle. Markle pops this one into foul territory. The first baseman coming over is going to make the play. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Marshall still with the lead. Huddy DePastino. Set to come up for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And Huddy goes down swinging. That'll bring up Brandon DePastino. He's one for three on the day. With a double and an RBI, DePastino grounds it to the right side. It gets past Ari Riesland and into right field. DePastino's on first. Brady Love, the closer for the Marshall Thundering Herd, is warming up in the pen. And Brett Moon steps in. The DH Moon's going to drop down a bunt. Bigby fills it on to Riesland for the out at first. And Troy Reinhardt comes in now with two outs and a runner on second trying to add to the lead. Reinhardt drives it to the gap in right center field. It gets down. Rogers has it. The run's going to come around third to score, and it's 6-4. to four. Marshall at the end of the eighth inning. We go to the top of the ninth. Love in to try to get the save for the Thundering Herd. A blooper into center field. It's going to fall between all three fielders. And Oregon State's got a runner on for Brandon Bigby. He could tie the game with a home run here. The changeup. Bigby lines it to first. And the first baseman doesn't manage to tag the runner, so he will remain at first. But there's one out. Ari Riesland grounds it to the right side. They're going to go to second with it, and they make the out at second. That brings up Renee Rogers. The Beavers are down to their final out. A home run would tie it. Rogers grounds it to short. The shortstop on to first, and they're going to beat him out. They beat Rogers to the bag, and Marshall gets the victory. Their 11th win of the season to 40 losses. A tough loss for the Beavers, but it does not affect our conference play as we have two games against Cal Poly back home in Corvallis before we head out on the road to take on the Stanford Cardinal in what will shape up to be a very huge series in Pac-10 play. We have three series left in the Pac-10. We've got Stanford on the road, and then we're at home against Wazoo, and then back out on the road as we take on UCLA. But as we end this episode, we are sitting at 9-6, and six, tied with the USC Trojans in second place in the Pac-10. And our next Pac-10 opponent will be Stanford. They are in first, only one game ahead of us. So that will be a big series, and that will be on the next episode of Oregon State Beavers Dynasty. So we'll hope, hope you'll join us then as we take on the Stanford Cardinal from Palo Alto in the next episode. We'll see you then.